you guys believe in the trinity right so from what i understand in the trinity you guys believe that there's like god a god the father and then there's jesus his son but then there's also uh do you guys speak french no there's she like does the, a little bit a few, say a yeah, the, holy the holy spirit the holy, holy spirit, spirit yeah yeah okay so my question is how can so is so jesus is the son so he's human right well he came in human form if we're going to talk about his nature yeah he pre-existed before he came in human form as god the father no as the eternal son so okay so he pre-existed in a, in a godly manner in eternity in eternity he's eternal okay so you guys don't believe he's god we don't believe in god no you don't believe he's god i believe he's god but he's got <laughs> no one cares no one cares yeah so no cares. when you read when you read the scriptures when you read the scriptures yeah and you understand who god is yeah you'll see right away that he's a triune god okay he has a triune nature yeah and you see that in the beginning of the bible you see that throughout the prophets you definitely see it in the new testament okay so he's the father yeah he's the son and he's the holy spirit now think of it this way what is god well he's god he's yeah. one being yeah. then the question is who is god he's the father the son the holy spirit so so god in three forms three persons three persons yeah one god in three persons in three persons okay that's not a contradiction it because is. If I said God is one God, but he's also three gods, well, which one is he? Is he one God or is he three gods? And if I said God is one person, but he's also three persons, then it's like, well, that's contradiction. Is he one or is he three? What the Bible teaches is that God is one God, yeah. <laughs> but he's three distinct divine persons. Okay. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, who is Yahweh, the eternal God. Okay. The one God of Israel. Okay. The only God. Um... So in that case, if Jesus is God, but he's the son, but he's God, but he's human, like it's very, I find it very confusing. Christ, the Bible says, is the creator okay. of all things. All okay. things were made through him and for him. Okay. Um, if you read the gospel of John chapter one, yes. John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Okay, so right there in that one verse alone, in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, it says the, the Word was with God, He was God. Yeah. He was in the beginning. But the Word, when you go down to verse 14 of John 1, it says the Word became flesh, flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory as of the glory of the Father. Okay. So this Word was with god and who is god he took on human form okay so god took on human form to become jesus to be jesus to be our savior because we have a need yeah we have a need we're sinners yes. we've fallen from the glory of god yeah you've sinned and i've sinned yeah and we need a savior we need someone to redeem us from sin yeah. from death yeah. from condemnation judgment kayamet, yeah hell so so when jesus like sacrificed himself yeah. for sinners like what was that supposed to stop people from sinning in the future no what was that for so that's a good question can i read you a verse in the bible yes, yes. okay so um, like like here's the thing i find that here you can't really talk about religion without it being taboo so i'm like i'm coming in a here in canada or here on no, no, in Canada. Oh, okay. not Canada. Canada. Yeah. I'm not even mm. such somewhere else. But I just find like I'm here with the intention of learning and just like giving you guys the questions that I've always wondered. Like, That's very good. That's, That's very good. Yeah. In John chapter five, Jesus healed a man mm. who was paralyzed. Okay. And this is what he said to the man in John chapter five. You can read it yourself, uh, verse fourteen. So afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Sin what? Sin, no, sin more. more? Sin no more. Sin no more. Yeah. So to answer your question, 
Christ died for our sins, yeah. but the Bible, it's very clear not to remain in that state, not to not willfully to sin. sin. But we sin all the time. Like We do sin all the time, but the difference with Christ is He gives those who follow Him His Holy Spirit. Okay. And the Holy Spirit has fruits and attributes, yeah. and some of them are love, joy, patience, gentleness, self-control. These are fruits of the Holy Spirit that you can have too, mm. if you put your faith in Christ. Okay. So you're not left alone like an orphan. Yeah. Jesus said, when I go, if you read John 14, He said, I go to the Father, but I will send uh, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who will be with you forever, okay. who will dwell with you. Okay. Does that make sense? Kind of. Now, I have a question. So, yeah. just to be clear, yeah. Jesus is seen as the Son, but he does not have a God figure. So, so Jesus is just human. Sorry. But Jesus is seen as the Son. Seen by who? By Christians, as the Son of God, but he, he's human. Like you guys admit, he's. No, no. So, the, with the way the Bible describes Christ, yeah. Like I said, he is the Word of God, and the Word of God is eternal. It's not a created thing. The so Word he, of God. He's not. Do you believe he's immortal or not? He is immortal. So, if you read the Old Testament. Put aside the Gospel of John, put aside the New Testament. Okay. If you read the Old Testament, for example, Micah chapter 5, verse 2, it yeah. talks about one who will come from Bethlehem, yeah. who is from everlasting. Yeah. Everlasting. And it's talking about the Messiah. Okay. Like he doesn't have a beginning and an end, he's yeah. from everlasting. Yeah. Um, if That's you. Called Mighty God, everlasting God. I was just going to go there. In Isaiah chapter 9, mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah refers to the Messiah as El Gibor, the mighty God, okay. the, the Messiah, so the, the Son, it says. So the Son is viewed as the mighty God. What is, is this the New Testament? This is the, the Bible. So I'm going to go to the New Testament. I'm going to go to the Gospel of Mark. I know there's the Old Testament and the New Testament. Yeah. This is the... So what I'm holding is the entire Bible. It's the Old oh. Testament and the New Testament. Do you um, have a copy that I can take home? Yeah, yeah. We can give you a Gospel of John. I have just the Gospel of John. Um, the whole yeah, I just want right like, here's the thing, yeah. as a Muslim, yeah. um, I want to know, like, I think it's important to know, like, okay, like, Christians believe this, this is this, you know, Jews believe this is this, this person believes is that, so I yeah. want to read the Bible, I want to know what the Bible says, yeah. like, what's, because there's, there you go. Ah. Gospel John. so, okay, so I know there's, I know this is going to be off topic from what <laughs> we're just talking about, but there's contradictions. This is, by the way, a Catholic who told me this, that the four different books, I mean, one of them is slightly different, but the three others are very similar, but there's still some contradictions between the three. No two eyewitnesses are ever going to give the same exact account. You and I can be eyewitnesses of a murder, mm -hmm. for example, or any event. We're not going to give the same exact account. Okay. So uh, three out of the four Gospels are synoptic. Okay. Uh, they relay the same message in different selective ways. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not contradictions, it's selective information. No, my question is... So that's, the, just to be clear, that's yeah. not a contradiction. Okay. It's just selective information. So then it raises the question of when, when Christians come to knowing like how to, how to worship, what to do, um, where do they get the information from? From the Bible, the Word of God. So they don't get it from the four uh, different books. I don't well, know. Well, it depends what, what you're talking about. So in first, the in, Gospels. In First Thessalonians chapter five, mm -hmm. Paul says that we should pray unceasingly. Pray without. So pray without ceasing. Okay. So never stop praying. Yeah. Now obviously, like I'm not praying right now, so it, it just it's a command think, to always yeah. pray. Yeah. So that's one place where we get prayer from. Mm. Then there's another place that says, do not forsake the assembly of the brethren. Mm. So fellowship with other believers. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's in the book of Hebrews. So there's prayer, there's fellowship, um, there's being like-minded, you know, in our theology and our doctrine. It depends on what you're talking about. So like I'm talking about like the basics of like, like, like I'm not talking about the the small details. Like I don't know. Do you know? Well, do you know, praying and fellowshipping is not small. I know, but like to lift you know, up our hands and to worship God and sing hymns. That's not small. That's like it comes from the heart. It should yeah, come from the heart. But that's not what I mean. Like okay, do you what know? Do you like do you know? Do you know enough about Islam? Like do you, do you know how there's Almost. like the Quran and then there's like a Hadith? So you know how like our main ideologies and our main like worshiping everything comes from the Quran and then a Hadith will give you like 
details like yeah of course like how to pray the way we have to prostrate and stuff comes from a hadith but like if you come to see where ev- everything that has to do with islam comes from it comes from the quran so for not me not everything most it doesn't tell you to pray five times in the quran the shahada is not in the quran like the complete shahada you might find one you know the first part and the second part in different surahs um that statement is not true what you just said but you know what you know what i'm trying to say like I don't though, because a lot of the pillars, practices yeah. that Muslims do is from the hadiths. Yeah, those are the, the details that I'm talking about. How to do something, but to pray, to fast, well, to do a hajj. A pillar and a detail is two different things. But that's what I'm talking about. Pillar Where? is like a fundamental foundational thing. Detail yeah. is like okay, secondary. So, no, but you know, like that's what I mean. The fundamentals, okay. do they come in Christianity? Do they come from the Bible yes. or do they come from God? So the fundamentals for us is to pray. Mm-hmm. To believe Christ died for our sins. Yeah. Okay. Um, to believe that there's one God. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's very clear in the Bible. That there's only one God. Yeah. Uh, the Trinity is a fundamental belief in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't not believe in the Trinity and the triune nature of God. It just doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Reading the Word of God, it's very clear who Christ is. It's clear who the Holy Spirit is. And it's clear, obviously, who the Father is. They're all one. Yeah. They're God. Um, but sorry, go on. What were you? What are you asking? Well, so if we if we take our fundamental Christian beliefs and practices from the Gospels or from the other parts of the Bible as well, you mean like the other parts of the New Testament? Yes. Yeah, so like if we take them from both. Can I add to what I was saying? Yes. Okay. There's the Old Covenant and then there's the New Covenant. The Old Covenant was the Old Testament mm-hmm. before Christ, which was the children of Israel following the commands of God. Uh, directly mm-hmm. it was like a theocracy mm-hmm. so god was literally their god governing them directly okay uh, through the prophets and the judges and you know moses and whatnot uh, but they 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 were awaiting uh, the the messiah they were awaiting the new Who's covenant they? israel the okay. children of yeah, israel yeah. they were under the law of moses but we're under the grace of god the grace is different grace is something we don't deserve grace is a free gift the bible says mm-hmm. given to undeserving sinners okay so you're a sinner, I'm a sinner, we've all sinned, we've mm-hmm. all fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah. But God in His mercy, in His love, he, He's given us something called grace for free. And that's not keeping a set of laws like the children of Israel did back in Moses' time. Okay, so they had 613 laws that they had to keep in the Old Covenant. Mm-hmm. And obviously they, didn't, they couldn't keep all of them. Because the Bible says if you break one law, it's as though you've broken all. Why? Because God is perfect. He's 100% perfect and holy. Yeah. So um, his standard of perfection, sorry, his standard of holiness is perfection. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so they, they kept the law of Moses. Mm-hmm. Sorry, is the sun in your eyes? Should yeah, I stand it's fine, it's fine. I'm sunny today. It's, I like it. It's okay. something okay, I'm okay. having a hard time with. Um, <laughs> today we're under grace. Uh, Christ himself said in John chapter 1, Mm-hmm. That uh, the law came through Moses, but grace, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The law came through Moses, but okay. Now here's the sad part for you as a Muslim: yeah. is you follow a set of laws. You fo- follow the law of Muhammad. There are certain things you must keep and follow to to make it to Jannah one day. So, what do you have to do to make it to heaven? Okay, as a Christian. That's a good question. That question is actually asked in the gospel, in the in the book of Acts, in the New Testament. There's a letter called uh, the Acts of the Apostles, mm-hmm. uh, and someone asked that question: What must I do to be saved? And uh, I think it was Paul that responded. He said, "Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. and you shall be saved." Believe. It takes faith. Yeah. That's what saves faith. So you just have to believe. Well, that's you it? you have faith genuinely with all your heart, with understanding. Through the evidence that's given to us. So you have to believe in God and the Trinity. You believe what God did for us 2,000 years ago on the cross. Yes. And if you believe that Mm -hmm. genuinely and understand what Christ did on the cross, and you believe that, Mm -hmm. God says that he'll give you his Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay. And then, yeah. And then going back to the first thing you said, can we sin after knowing the truth? No. So it's not, it's not just all believe in Christ and then live how you want. 
Okay. Believe in Christ and through the strength and the power of God, through His Holy Spirit, we're going to walk in holiness. God is a holy God. It's not just a religion we follow. We follow the Almighty God yeah. who sent His Son and His Son died for our sins. He shed His blood. This is kifr and blasphemy in Islam. Okay? In Islam, Allah says, I have no son. I don't beget, which is not even something we believe in. What's we don't beget. Like, He begot a son. Like, oh. He. You know, like a man and a woman Actually, come together and they beget a child? In, the, in Islam, it's, there's a verse that specifically mentions the Trinity and that it's not, that's obviously our belief, like with all yeah. due respect to your belief, of course I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but it's that it's not true, like we don't believe in it. I don't, I'm not, I'm not quoting it word for word, I'm quoting what it's trying to say. So, yeah. What but, about it? I'm just saying. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. But, it's just, how can God have a son that's that's the part where like my mind just stops so you have to not think of it the way the quran yeah. explains it or describes it which is kind of funny because if allah is actually god mm. he would understand what the trinity is but do you know that allah is the same as your allah he's not but allah i just want to finish my point i just want to finish my second. point allah is just well, god in so arabic it's just it's like saying god it's like saying dieu sure i just want to go to my point it literally is <laughs> if allah was god himself he would understand what Christians believe in, what the Bible actually says about the Trinity. But the Quran doesn't even define the Trinity correctly in we two spots. In it. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. It, 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 it doesn't even define it correctly. So for one, the Bible or Christians don't believe, it doesn't matter what Christians believe, it yeah. depends what the Bible says. Yeah. The Bible doesn't say that um, God begot a son, like he procreated a son. Mm. That's not what the Bible says. But the Quran says, Allah does not beget, nor was he begotten. Do you have a verse? Because I don't think Yeah, I, I have verses. Oh, I have plenty of verses. I can see. give it to you right now. Yeah, yeah. You have your Quran on you? I have my phone on me and it has Quran. Okay. You can pull it up if you want. Yeah, right? let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Sorry, just give me two you seconds. You guys get a lot of comments like that often? Like people just passing by and like... Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. Sorry, one second. Just let me find it here. Okay, there we go. I'm... Okay. Okay, okay so... Um, I'll give you a few. Surah 2, Ayah 116. And it says, They say Allah has begotten a son. Okay, let me see. Uh, Surah 2... Let me actually search on Google because sure. I know the surahs by name and not by name. It's Baqarah. Oh. Which ayah? 116. 116. It's actually right there. Let me search for ayah 116. Okay. Allahu walada subhanahu bellahu ma fi samawati wal ardi kullun lahu qanitun. You speak Arabic, right? I understand a little bit. I don't speak okay. Arabic. Like you, there's one thing to take into account. Mm -hmm. This is translated, mm -hmm. and different trans. Just like you said, with a witnessing a yeah. crime, yeah. different translations are gonna translate things slightly differently. So here, what he said, It doesn't doesn't mean like he has given birth or begotten a child. It just means he has taken into like a child. You know what I mean? But that's not even what we believe in. That's not how the Bible describes God's that. nature. So you look, look, in Surah son. 2, 116, it says, Allah has begotten a son. In Surah 112, verses 1 to 4, it says, God is one, the eternal God. He begot none, nor was he begotten. You should know this verse. It's uh, I know well in Arabic. Known. There you go, yeah. So he, but in Arabic, he begot not... none, nor was he begotten. Translate for me in Arabic. He begot none, nor nor was he he just i know the verse you're talking about yeah. he's just saying that he has no kinship nor he, he's just saying he has no kinship mm -hmm. he, he doesn't have a son nor was he a son of somebody nor like he does not there's no it's just allah he's just god there's nobody no let son, me show no you this verse and i'll put the this whole thing to rest because okay. look verse quran chapter 6 verse 101 it says wonderful originator of the heavens and the earth how can he have a son when he has no consort what's consort Consort. A spouse or someone whom he can procreate with. What's what are you? Six one oh one. So what I'm trying to explain to you is mm -hmm. the way Allah describes 
the Trinity is as if Christians believe or the Bible says that God begot a son with a female. That's what Surah 6101 says right there. How can he have a son when he has no consort? He created all things and he has full knowledge of all things. This is not what we believe in. Yeah. Okay. I want to say something about the first verse. I have a translation here. Quran.com. Yeah. They say Allah has offspring. Glory be to him. In fact, to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and earth and all are subject to his will. It never said the word begotten or God had begotten. It just God has offspring. Sorry. Can I see that? Yeah. It's right here. Even that. So offspring. That's not what the Bible says. Sorry, I was least really struck. Yeah, not, don't worry about it. Might not agree on Read the Arabic. Yeah. Really I just did. I've noticed, I've noticed when I'm reading the English translations, whether it's Mahsan Khan, Yusuf Ali, Pekdil, whatever, the Sahih International, I'm impressed. They either add words in parentheses and brackets that is not in the Arabic, or they change words in the English. So I'm telling you as an Arabic speaker or reader You just said you don't speak it you, that much You, you, oh. you You should read the Arabic I just did to you here and write وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا سُبْحَانَهُ بَلْ لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ كُلٌّ لَهُ قَانِتُونَ I just Remember when I said اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا And I Without even seeing the English translation mm -hmm. I told you It doesn't mean he begotted or gave birth It just means he took in They say Allah has offspring like So offspring Offspring means you actually created Here's the thing Here's the thing You know how for example, you are you. You cannot be three different entities at the same time. But that's not what we believe in. You just said. I explained it earlier. I said God is one entity. In three different forms. Not forms, persons. Three different persons. So you're one person, one entity. Not one person. What are you? Okay, so that, that's why I'm making this clear to you. Is I'm coming. Like I'm getting to the. Point. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So God is one being. Yeah. But he's three distinct persons. So you, okay, I'm gonna get to a place, just yeah. let me finish. So you're one being, because you are a being, you're a human being, right? Yes. But you cannot be three different entities or persons or whatever you wanna call it. But it's something that I didn't challenge because mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe this is something that as God who can do anything, he can do that, right? Right, we can. Right, so we're here it's the same people. thing where I can use the same argument where you say Allah has offspring. We humans, we have offspring through giving birth. But that doesn't mean that Allah has to do it the same way that you think we do it. Because remember, God, your God, my God, everybody's God, has knowledge and, and, and abilities that are way superior than our understanding. Okay. So I think that argument is a little... I'm not making an argument. I'm just reading what the Quran says. In the verse I showed you, mm -hmm. the, the earlier one, it mm -hmm. said, how can he have a son mm -hmm. when he has no consort? Okay. If he doesn't have a wife, how can he have a son? The Bible doesn't say that God has a wife or he had a wife and that's how Jesus was created. We don't believe in any of that, that yeah. Jesus was created or that God has a wife or that that's how Jesus was formed. We, here's what we believe mm -hmm. is Christ existed with the Father in eternity. Okay, so he'd like... He, he always just, existed. Yeah. Okay, so the Quran got it wrong in multiple places by saying that Allah does not have a consort or uh, he doesn't beget or he has no offspring. That's not even what we believe in. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I just think like in this argument, the word beget okay. is not, just doesn't fit anywhere anymore because I just showed you. That's not how. That's not what the translation that you And did. even in Arabic, like I'm an Arabic speaker and I told you, I'm not here, I'm here, genuinely here to learn. And I saw the one where the, con what's the word called? Like, consort? It actually says mate here. Mate. There you go. Yeah. Okay, that's not what we believe in though. I know. You just said that. So if Allah is God, then He would explain the Trinity correctly. He wouldn't even go there to say, oh, how can God have a mate or a, a wife or a consort or anything like that. Okay. But... Does that not give you a red flag? If no, Allah is all-knowing, He would know. Your Bible gives me a red flag because there's so many contradictions. Hold on, hold on. You believe in Tawheed. Yes. Imagine... Imagine the Bible described Tawheed, I don't know, it, it, it said God, Allah is two. Yeah. Well, you would say to me, well, if, if your God, the God of the Bible is God, then he would explain Tawheed correctly. Okay. Right? Would you not say that to me? No, because I just wouldn't believe in what your God would say. Like, I would just think that. Well, you should believe in what my God would say. Because the Quran stands on the, the Anjila and the Torah. Yeah, but here's the thing. The Quran stands I on... I don't have to believe in the Quran. 
it came way after, it contradicts the previous scriptures, it denies uh, Christ's deity, it denies that he ever died on the cross, but you have to believe in the Anjil and the Torah. It commands you, it says if you have doubt, if you have any questions, ask the people of the book. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah so I know, if I know your God saying. is all-knowing, if he's the God of the universe, he, surely he should have known how to define the Trinity. Yeah. So I just want you to think about that later. You don't have to give me an answer now. You can think about that later.